So now we are going to demonstrate uh, treatment of facial telangiectasia. With facial telangiectasia, we need the NDAG, the 1064. And as long as we are working on small uh, telangiectasia in the face, I would like to use a small spot size, two millimeter spot, maximum three millimeter spot, not more than that. Because if we use larger spot size, then the penetration depth is going to be higher and this might increase the risk of scarring. So it's very important really to, to use very small spot size. So in this case today, I'm going to be using the two millimeter spot size with the ND egg. And the pulse duration utilized in this case is going to be 10 milliseconds. In the presentation, we discussed different options and we know that we use one of three pulse durations for treating uh, veins, 10, 20, or 30. And when we are using small, tiny uh, veins, uh, then we are using the 10 millisecond. The fluence is going to be ranging between 150 up to 180. This is the range depending on the skin uh, type and color and also the size of the vessel. So we have certain presets on the machine, which we are going to show you. And we are going to discuss how we navigate and how we increase or decrease. So when we go to the machine, we are going to select the ND egg. And in, among the options of the treatment of ND egg with the SP Dynamis, we have veins. So we press the veins. And when we press the veins, we'd like to see what are the options. So we have to select between blue or red. So in this case, the facial telangiectasia in this case are red. So we are going to press the red. And then we have to determine what are the, what is the size of the vessels. So here it's very small, very fine vessels. And in this case, we are going to be using the R33 handpiece. So we do the check mark and the presets are going to be showing as we discussed the two millimeter spot, 10 millisecond pulse duration. And it is giving me 180 joules. 180 joules is relatively high, but it is required when we are treating very tiny, small vessels, because when we have less concentration of chromophores, then the absorption for the laser is going to be less. So we need to use higher fluence. However, in this case, our patient today is having very fair skin. So it's skin type one and two. And in this case, the laser penetration is going to be much more significant. So we have to be a little bit more conservative in order to avoid harming the skin or causing scarring. So instead of using 180 joules, I would like to start with 160. I'll go down a little bit. So this is going to be a safer starting point in order to avoid any side effects. And then we see the reaction. If we saw what we expect, which is the vasospasm and disappearance of the vessel, then we are good to go. If it didn't happen, then we try to do a double pulse. With the cooling, it is going to be uh, very safe. So if the double pulse didn't work, then I would increase the fluence from 160 to 170. And if it worked, then we don't need to do that. So this is going to be the protocol and this is going to be the procedure. Along with using the ND egg for treating vessels, it's very, very important to use very appropriate cooling of the skin in order again to avoid damaging the skin or causing scarring. So in this case, we'll be using the cold air cooling, which is going to be associated with the treatment parallel to the treatment. But also, in addition to that, we can use some ice cubes to compress the skin and cool the skin, and this will minimize the incidence of bruises, which can happen after any uh, treatment of veins. So this is going to be the case, and we are going to start the treatment uh, now. So the cooling now is on, and we can see the veins very clearly. The aiming beam is showing where the laser is going to be applied and I will start the treatment. So one pulse. It's one hertz and I'm seeing pretty good effect. And the vein disappears as we can see. I use the ice cube compression and this will minimize the incidence of bruises. So this is something I use along with using the cold air with the uh, treatment. So the first vein disappeared as we can see. And now we are going to target the second vein.
and we can see that the treatment is very effective. And the key here is to see uh, vasospasm to the vein and disappearance of the vein without any epidermal changes. I don't want to see any epidermal separation or whitening. Whitening means coagulation, and this will mean that a scarring might happen. So in this case, we have seen that the vein disappeared without any effect on the epidermis, and this is exactly what we would like to do. So few more pulses in small other veins, and we are done. So as we can see, all the veins disappeared. Uh, it took few seconds, less than a minute to treat the veins, but it's really very important to make sure that we are cooling the skin nicely and the compression with ice cubes will minimize the incidence of bruises and this is very important. But if bruises happens, it might stay for seven days. It can be covered with makeup and it is a potential risk the patient has to be aware of. So we can see how much the skin uh, becomes much clearer without any veins. I can see here a couple of more veins which I would like to show you how we treat them so I can pre-cool with the ice cubes and then a couple of pulses and we can see that because this is much more small so it's a little bit more resistant than the larger veins and those are the ones where we can really uh, increase the fluence however uh, it is it is uh, better to try to use another pass on those veins without increasing the fluence. We can see that the vein disappeared and this is something which is really very nice. We compress uh, the skin we treated with uh, cold uh, with ice uh, cubes in order to again minimize the purpura or the bruises. When we are using the 1064, we have a great advantage that this laser is not affecting the melanin. So if the patient is tanned or of ha having darker skin types, then we don't have any concern. If we are using other vascular specific lasers like the KTP, the 532, or the pulse dye laser, then the darker the skin, the more problematic it is. So we can get hypopigmentation or hyperpigmentation and loss of efficacy. So with the more superficial uh, lasers like KTP and the pulse dye laser, the treatment is not as effective and as safe as using the NDA. This is something I really like about the 1064, that I can work on all skin types, whether it's the summer or the winter, if the patient is tanned or not tanned, so it's effective and safe in all conditions, whereas with other types of lasers, including the IPL, pulse dye laser, and the KTP, we have to be very cautious if the skin color is dark or if the patient is tanned.